Welcome everyone, Dr. Mandel here. We are going to have an amazing time here. We have Dr. Jess, how are you there? Dr. Jess, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine, Alan. Dr. Awesome. Uh, by the way, if you just tuned in with us, uh, we have notifications going out. We are streaming live. We will have many, many people coming from all around the world in the chat room, and we will take a lot of our chatting questions in a little while. Let me introduce you to a dear friend of mine. We go back many, many years ago, uh, Dr. Jesse, we call him. And he is a definitely, I would call him one of the finest yoga practitioners around in the country, in my opinion. And let me just say a couple of things, Jess, uh, that we're going to be talking about breathing. We know that breathing is something that we do on a daily basis. It involves our involuntary muscles, whether we're awake or sleeping or we're actively exercising. And breathing is living. Oxygen is everything. It's a, the vital function of life. And in yoga, we refer this as to pranayama. Prana, pranayama translates to the control of life force. And the research shows that regular practice of this controlled breathing can affect our entire nervous system. It affects the, the health and wealth of our body, our overall physical and mental well-being. That's why it's funny, Doc, is that, you know, we see people at the end of the day. What do they do? They, they sigh. They take a, oh, it's involuntarily, just innately. That sigh helps aid in stress, reducing stress. It actually helps digestion, helps improve sleep. It cools us down. And what we're going to learn today is that we're going to affect the entire world. We're going to share something that is so beautiful and so effective for our health. And doc, this is something for stress, for anxiety, uh, for pain, for what else can you add to this now? Uh, Pranayama is, uh, it relaxes you. It helps you uh, sleep better, digest your food better, think more clearly, uh, relax, appreciate beauty, and uh, just lead a more, uh, less, less stressful life. So explain a little bit about, about the yoga. Yoga, breathing, pranayama, in a real short amount of time, because I want to move real quick right in here. We have a lot of people tuning in to us from India. We want to welcome you. You'll see a lot of people, and we will go into this instructions as we progress. Dr. Jess, it's all yours. Uh, pranayama, or the breathing exercise, is one of the core practices of yoga. There, uh, Some of the other core practices are uh, meditation, of course, asana, the, the postures that you do in a yoga class, uh, Selfless service is a big core practice with yoga or uh, service for the sake of serving, giving for the sake of giving, loving for the sake of loving, also called volunteer work. Also another practice is study of spiritual books, religious books, uh, to constantly improve your character with, uh, with improving virtues, your uh, Kindness, love, forgiveness, generosity, charity, uh, and in the spiritual life, we're trying to reduce the vices like lust, anger, greed, hatred, jealousy. And uh, in uh, pranayama, it's the control of the prana. Prana means uh, energy. Uh, some some words that well. Pranayama is the control of this vital life force. Uh, some words that are similar in meaning to prana are magnetism, uh, electricity, um, chi, vitality, power, energy. We're controlling this life force, and this brings us more peace and uh, a happier and healthier and more productive life. You know, it's, there are a lot of people, we all have our issues, Doc, uh, uh, when it comes down to survival, particularly in these hard times, what's going on with this pandemic, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, chemically. Uh, when we have the, the, the brain, obviously, there's one thing that we can control that's proven in medical research and science is that we have control over our parasympathetic nervous system by, by breathing exercises. We can make changes. We can lower blood pressure. 
we can put we can lower anxiety we can help you we can help our sleeping ability to sleep better we can clear our mind but this prana as Mitasa says right here and i think she deserves to be seen pranayama life force there's something beyond bigger than what we can see what we can hear this goes back thousands of years ago this is nothing new in science this is powerful stuff and the purpose of this video here is to share the education with these people on how they can apply this to their own life to allow them to be healthier to help fight off disease we know that by practicing the art of pranayama we know that's going to help increase the strength of the immune system so there's i'm excited about this this is really powerful stuff and the more we look at these things uh here's someone in egypt that talks about chakras but this is the health and wealth of our body you know medicine is important we're not here to knock medicine, but there's a better way of preserving our health and body is by keeping it healthy. This is what we want to do today. Yes, and uh, pranayama is uh, you're breathing in prana or energy or power rather than the mere atmospheric air. You're breathing in power. But I, I'd like to talk about it for a quick minute about, I just jotted down while I was waiting, five things that are necessary for the successful practice of pranayama, in my opinion. And the first thing would be charming scenery. All these yogis and Buddhists, they practice their spiritual practices in among amidst charming scenery. They go to uh, near a river or the monasteries and ashrams are built in uh, forests or in mountains. It's hard to do it in the middle of a busy city. So. The second thing necessary for successful practice of yoga and pranayama, in my opinion, is to have a teacher. Uh, if you want to learn how to dance, it's good to have a teacher. If you want to learn how to cook, it's good to have a teacher. It's not that important for the what we're going to do today. It's a very simple practice, but it's helpful if you're doing more advanced breathing exercises. But today, it's not something you can do. The third thing necessary, I believe, is cool weather. These yogis go to icy cold Himalayan caves. They have no money. They have no friends they have no bank account they have almost no food no clothes but they're living a very contented existence in these icy cold himalayan caves because they're doing several hours a day of the pranayama several hours a day of meditation and they're high naturally the the fourth thing necessary would be pure food when i first went to the yoga retreat the the meal i had was lentil uh, vegetable bean soup and a salad and i thought wow that's satisfied me that was so simple if you overload your stomach with meat hamburgers, hot dogs, pizza, french fries, and chocolate cake, and try to meditate, good luck, you know. The fifth thing, and maybe the most important thing for successful practice is silence. It's very silent if you go to a park, if you go to a garden, if you go to a, a mountain retreat, if you go to the forest, and that's where the yogis go to practice. Uh, I have something, Lao Tzu, the father of... Uh, uh, Taoism wrote, silence is a source of great strength. Buddha said, speak only if what you're going to say is more beautiful than silence. And my teacher, Swami Vishnu, who was a student of Shivananda, said, hear the silence, see the silence, taste, touch, and smell the silence. Silence is peace. Silence is truth. Silence is the peace that passeth all understanding. Go deep into the silence. Become one with the silence. I have so, to interrupt you there. I have to interrupt you there. Silence is, is so powerful. Yeah. Uh, and, and we are living with lots of noise. Oh, uh, the there, there's lots of noise. We don't have to even go where it's coming from. It's not only talking about television and radio. We're talking about noise, noise of stress, uh, noise of our own self-esteem, noise yeah. of, of not getting back to our inner self, noise of not being able to find who we are on the inside. And I think that that's part of healing. And the noise of pain that millions of people are suffering with, the noise of sickness, the noise of disease, this is all noise. This is affecting our nervous system. This is affecting chemicals in the brain. And I really want to move quick because I want to go into our techniques because this is what they're waiting for. I really want to talk about what can we do, what can we share with them. And as we go through these techniques, um, 
what we will go ahead and take a few questions. We'll, we'll bring them in from around the world and we'll ask a couple questions you can maybe comment on and we can actually share and they can get right, to, right back to basics and start doing this right away. They can start doing this right away to help their health because this is what we're all looking for. Okay. Am I waiting for a question? Or no, I think you were going to go into oh. our techniques right now. Oh, oh technique. Um, this is a very, very, I'm going to do just a simple technique so anybody it, can do it. Doc, there are three different things I think you're going to share with us tonight. Okay. The three different yeah. things. So let's start and let's go over it and let's kind of do it slow that we can really pick this up and they can really look back because this is going to be a pre-recorded. People are going to be looking at this for a long time on my channel uh, as we're streaming out to a couple of different platforms right now. But this is so important because I, I really honestly believe that when people start practicing this and start perfecting this, they are going to start to heal. They're going to start to repair. They're going to be blessed. Their whole life is going to change. Remember, this is all about healing. This is where it starts right here, the breath. Go ahead, Doc. And they also can have the ability to impart their healing to others. Correct. And, and immediately refresh themselves. Uh, this is so true. When I left the ashram after seven years of practicing uh, an hour a day of meditation, an hour a day of pranayama, the breathing exercises, and the rest of the day serving, I was able to go back to college after not being in school for 25 years and doing well. Then I became a chiropractor. I could never have done it without the training, the yoga training. I was 45 when I started school. I got my chiropractic license when I was 50, when everybody was thinking about retiring. So the pranayama and the yoga gave me the strength and the fortitude to get back to school and do it. Uh, with the pranayama, when you inhale, we're doing inhaling and exhaling. When you inhale and exhale, do it very slowly and don't make any sounds. There are some pranayama techniques where you need to make some sounds, like, but not with the ones we're doing today. And you uh, should, uh, not, uh, there should never be any straining. Doc, yeah. I'm gonna have you move a little bit over in the picture if they can see more of you, because oh. you're kind of off to the side. There you go, there you go, there you go, perfect. Go ahead. All right, there should be, never be any straining. There should always be joy and pleasure in the practice. So the first one is very, very, very simple. Uh, it's becoming popular today in yoga classes because it's very simple. People need to start out simple. We're just sitting straight. If you, you can sit on some pillows or is, you should be comfortable. So you can sit on a straight back chair like I'm doing right now. Your hands can be on your knees, face up or face down or in your lap. You're inhaling about five seconds through your nostrils. One, two, three, four, five. And then hold your breath for eight seconds. Two, three, four, five five, six, seven, eight, and exhale through both nostrils for eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's one round. Let's do it again. Inhale, five seconds. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now exhale, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Simple. You can do this for, yeah. Breathing in through the nose, out of the mouth, preferably, does it matter on this? Uh, there are different schools of thought. Some people in, inhale through the nose. Some people exhale through the nose. Some people exhale through the mouth. They're both good. There's no okay. right or wrong. Okay, that's schools, good to know. Different schools Excellent. of thought. Okay, thank you. Um, the next one is the most popular one with the yogis. We're putting... And different schools do different techniques. The way I learned, the second and third finger is in the palm. You're using the thumb and the two small fingers as locks. I'm going to place the right thumb on the right nostril. I'm inhaling through the left nostril. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. Then you close the nose, hold the breath for count of six, uh, count of four, three, four. Now exhale through the right, two, three, four. Inhale right, inhale one, two, three, four. Hold the breath for four, one, two, three, four. Exhale left, one, two, three, four. That's one complete round, do it again. Inhale left, one, two, three, four. 
Retain the breath for four, two, three, four. Exhale right, one, two, three, four. Inhale right, one, two, three, four. Hold the breath, one, two, three, four. And exhale left, one, two, three, four. That's another round. As we get more advanced, we hold it for longer, but there's one more I'd like to go through that's very popular. It's called Kapalabhati. It means a shining skull in <laughs> Sanskrit. Um, you're taking a very forceful exhalation through both nostrils. At the same time, you're pushing your stomach in. <laughs> so we're, we're, sque we're squeezing our abdominal muscles in as yeah. we force out. It's a forceful exhalation. At the same time, you're exhaling through the, the nostrils. It's like you're sneezing at the same time somebody's punching you in the stomach. And you can start out with uh, 10 or 20 pumpings. And then as you get more advanced and more comfortable, you can work your way up to 50, 100, and then and after the last pumping, you inhale, exhale, take a nice inhalation and hold the breath for as long as you comfortably can. When I first went up to the retreat, I could hold my breath for 40 seconds. After two hours a day of breathing exercises, at the end of two weeks, I was able to hold my breath for two and a half minutes, and I was sold. The power I had was incredible. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you. And then... Let me, let me have uh, you move, scoot over a little bit to the side, Jesse, a little bit back, back in the center. There you go. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Just want to keep you in. I want to see how handsome you are. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> so... Um, but let's, let's, let's pause here for a second, Doc. All right. These techniques are very powerful. Now, they're so powerful, we, they're, they're, they're overly underestimated because... Oh, yeah they don't know the power behind it. So by practicing this, and a person with anxiety, uh, as someone mentioned, they feel that their anxiety starts to diminish. Uh, a person who has pain that increases the body, brain can then secrete endorphins. Uh, a person who has breathing problems can actually increase their vital capacity as we're training muscles, we're training the lungs. So this is not like a technique to, to treat A or treat B or treat C. This is a technique to allow your body to heal. And healing is physically and mentally in every other way. So we're not trying to target a source of a disease or a source of a symptom. We're trying to regain healing within the entire body. And obviously your body knows best. Can you start going with that? How would you express that? One of my patients held the world's record. He had seven world's record in free diving. He, he had the world's record. He can hold his breath underwater for eight minutes and six seconds. These days they do 10 minutes, somebody in Germany. But I asked him, do you do yoga breathing techniques? He says, of course, I do hours a day. Uh, and uh, recently uh, a yogi held his breath for 14 minutes, but not underwater, but <laughs> that's how they can bury him in a, in a coffin for a whole day. They're only taking yeah. like one breath per minute. So this increases your vital cap capacity. Capacity, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Also, I, I would recommend that you have a while you're doing the inhalations and exhalations, have a mental attitude that all divine qualities, mercy, love, forgiveness, kindness. I, I was going there. You read my mind. Are entering your system with the inhalation. Absolutely. And negative qualities are exiting your body with the, the negative quality, lust, anger, greed, hatred, jealousy, envy, fear, worry. All these negative qualities are exiting your body with the exhalation. Some people do that. I love it. I, I think that's so important because we're, we're bringing in affirmations and we're releasing negativity. And yeah. by, by that change of the mind, because as the mind absorbs positive affirmations, the, the, the chemistry within the brain and hormones within the brain, particularly the anterior pituitary, as well as the entire nervous system, central nervous system, is going to change. Because by putting the poison in over time, it destructs us. So this is not only helping us from a pranayama point of view, from a breathing point of view, but making these subliminal messages as we're doing this is kind of double, it's a double-edged sword. 
we're hitting two things at one time because we want to blow out. I mean, there's so much meditation where they say, as you blow out, let go, you know, the stresses and, and the things that bother you. It, it makes totally sense. Totally sense. I have a, a paragraph I like to read from uh, Swami Shivananda, the famous yogi. He wrote about the benefits of the practice of pranayama. Pranayama, though it concerns the breath, gives good exercise for the various internal organs and the whole body. Pranayama removes all sorts of diseases, improves health, energizes digestion, invigorates the nerves. A pranayama practitioner will have a light body free from disease, very fair complexion, a sweet melodious voice and pleasant smell from his body. He will have good appetite, cheerfulness, a handsome figure, good strength, courage, enthusiasm, a high standard of health, vigor, and vitality, and good concentration of mind. That's not bad. That's beautiful. Doc, what we go, we go right into our area. We've been uh, moving it about 21 minutes back into the program. We will go to our chat room now. And again, any yogas out there, anyone who'd like to comment, uh, and we will actually take a few questions, but we're going to keep them very short, Doc, because the time moves quick. Sure. I will pull, I will pull uh, some different things off the comments. We will bring them in. All right. People are going to want to say hello. They love you, whatever it is. Uh, as this person, as J J uh, Ganana says, thank you for this subject is important and powerful. A lot of people who understand more about this is going to be able to associate this because of their practice of this. Remember, this is a practice. Our first question here, Doc, uh, Evan from California, is this good for asthma? How would you explain to that, Doc? Is it good uh, for asthma? It wouldn't hurt. Uh, asthma is a serious condition, and I would try it. Uh, it's not going to make you worse. It can make you better. Absolutely. That would be my answer, too. Here's a uh, spiritual scientist. He's um, interested, which is nice. Uh, this fellow's never done yoga, but this is not really, you, you don't have to really go through yoga to do pranayama. I mean, I guess it was part of yoga, the practice of yoga, but anyone can do this. You don't have to be a yogi person to do this. Is that correct? Yeah, you don't have to be a card carrying yogi. <laughs> you, anybody can practice this. You, you can go on Google and Google yoga breathing techniques and you'll have a more uh, deeper uh, take uh, understanding. So again, we will take, uh, if you just tune in with me, uh, Dr. Jesse, uh, we go back many years. What a great heart. He is definitely a yoga practitioner. One of the gurus in my, in my book, I've been with a lot. Uh, and he, he really understands and knows the basis of this realize that this breathing we know is, uh, life it's life force. It's, it's, it's power, it's energy, it's chi and whatever you like to call it. The bottom line is it's healing. It's repairing to our system that if you're going physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever problems that we have, pain, blood pressure, this is going to help your body repair and heal. This has been long, long ago. How, how long are we going back with this? How many thousands of years, Doc? Well, Patanjali, who lived 300 years before Christ, uh, three, 300 uh, BC, and he formulated the modern yoga uh, system that they still use today, the eight limbs of yoga, the eight steps of yoga. The first two are uh, like what's like the Ten Commandments, the things you should do, the things you shouldn't do. The third one is the asana, what, the postures we do in a yoga class. The fourth one is what we're talking about tonight, awesome. pranayama, the breathing. Awesome. For, here's a question, Doc. Valdo says, does it help with anxiety? I can answer that one. Absolutely, 1,000% yes. There's nothing That's, better. There's nothing there's better. No, there's nothing better. Anxiety, stress, high blood pressure, uh, nervousness, insomnia, anything related to the central nervous system is overstimulated the parasympathetic nervous system where there's high cortisol, high adrenaline, high norepinephrine is going to do wonders for you. This is going to balance out the hormones in your body. Uh, even a woman, even problems who have female issues that may be hormonal related. It balances out the hormones. Everything's hormonal. We're all a bunch of cells, Doc. It's funny. M many back in the day when I taught yoga, 75% uh, of my class was women. Uh, in my chiropractic practice, about 70% women. Women do intelligent things. Men are, I don't know what's wrong with men, but at the gym, I, <laughs> I took a Pilates class recently. And there were 17 women there and me. I don't know. All the guys were in the gym. They're lifting weights, angry. You know, I do that too. But, you know, the weights make you stiff. The yoga and stretching makes you uh, uh, flexible and relaxed. So they complement each other. And one, one thing I have to say about women. I've had 15,000 patients from age 50 to 70. I had a quarter of a million patient visits. 
and mostly women. And one thing I that, that I hear over and over and over and over again from the women, they say, once I get to know them, they say, I just can't, I just can't seem to find a man who's spiritual. Huh. Men, women are, are inherently spiritual more than men. And they're 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 sweeter, they're kinder in general. So you guys out there, you better start taking a yoga class. <laughs> You'll do better with the women. Get spiritual. It's Doc, the way to be. Doc, uh, deviated left septum, DMARI says, uh, left deviated septum, helpful or try a different breathing through the nose. If someone has a deviated septum, can't get the oxygen or ear in, in the nose, what's an alternative method they can do for that? About every one, one hour and 50 minutes, about every two hours, uh, one nostril is op more open than the other. So it changes. So it changes about every two hours. And then it just uh, adjusts for that. If you're doing alternate nostril breathing and it's a little hard to get in, in the, the left, just open up the right slightly more so you get an equal amount of oxygen with each inhalation and exhalation. Doc, here is uh, from India. Please talk about the pranayama help heal. Does it help heal at the cellular level? 1,000%. Uh, uh, Go ahead and you can keep briefly say that in a nutshell. It, it, it's, I can't tell you, what, what, the, the best two weeks of my life were uh, b just before I went to compact school. I took a course up in the uh, Canadian forest for two weeks. It was a two week course. We did seven hours of breathing exercises a day and three hours of postures. We did 10 hours of broken up into three sessions. And before you took the course, you had to, uh, you couldn't take the course unless you were a vegetarian for two years and a certified yoga teacher. If you were a big meat eater, you wouldn't get through it. The energy was too strong. By the eighth day, it was the best day of my life. I mean, I never understood why Shivananda, the, his biographer said he practiced a minimum of four hours a day, even on a busy day. And he's, he wrote like 75 books. He had people he saw every day of his life. He was so busy. But he said he was always walking away and doing pranayama. He did four hours. So after the two weeks were up, I knew why he would do so much. I was so high. It was the best two weeks of my life. It was the only two weeks of my life. I didn't think about women. I'll tell you this. I was so, I was so, by the second week, and there were about 100 people in this retreat. There were 18 of us. And I would take my food and go into the forest because I couldn't, I wouldn't, couldn't be near people. I communicated with the trees, with the bugs. It was black fly season, mosquito season. I don't know about the, if you know about black flies, they rip a blotch of skin. They rip your skin right off. And it lasted through, this high lasted for uh, about three weeks after the two weeks. It, it was like you, we were drugged, but we were very focused and clear. And it was a natural high, like uh, I, just incredible. And I, and I asked Swami, I said, the Swami, the, Swami, the uh, Swami Vishnu, he said, you people have it easy. You're only doing 10 hours a day. When wow. I was a young monk, after you're a monk for one year, they put you out into the forest. There are scorpions. There are tigers. And nobody bothers you because you build up this power. The power was there. I didn't get one mosquito bite. Interesting. Everybody uh, else with long sleeves, sprays in itself. It was uh, we, had, we had someone that just mentioned about uh, they missed it because uh, – Will this be re-recorded? Absolutely. It's going to be on our channel, and I'm sure people watching this later will, will, will see it on the channel. So there's no worries. This will be uh, back on our channel. Uh, just for last uh, few things, Doc, because we're running out of time now, yeah. approaching the half hour. We've got uh, almost 600 people in, in the chat room here. Wow. Um, here is a, a question right here. I have nerve problems in my toe. It took much treatment, more than 10 years, and nothing is working. Can you suggest something on this, please? Uh, this is something, obviously, uh, we're not here to diagnose at this point right now. We're primarily talking about this. So, uh, I do recommend people out there who have lower back, type in lower back pain, motivational doc, go back on the search, and I have many, many great videos. Uh, but we'll take our last few questions. Uh, by the way, before we end up, Dr. Jess. Uh, what's up, that? I just have to say, up dog, down dog is the best for the lumbar uh, pain. Up dog, down dog. Yeah, it's, it's nothing bad. And swimming. And, of course, chiropractic adjustment. There you go. Uh, so anyways, uh, we'll take our last thing. Just lastly, Jess, what we like to do, Dr. Jess, I'm going to ask our audience out there, if you are tuning in outside the United States, we always do this the last couple of minutes. Let me know what country you are in right now to make Dr. Jess a little bit more happier to let him know that the time he spent with you guys is just not local. This is worldwide. 
And it's nice to see that you will get lots of people in the chat that will tell you they're from all around the world right now. You'll see. And I'm going to post it, Dr. Jess. So when you get off this, this, this live remote with us, you're going to say, my goodness, man, I never knew that we can touch so many lives. So we're going to go head for the, the chat room. And please go ahead and let me know where you are tuning from outside of the country. Uh, we want to see where you're from, okay? All right, just take a look here, Jess. All right, I'm not going to, I don't even have to say it. I'm just going to go ahead and, and bring this right in front of you. We got Granada, I will say it, Hawaii, Canada. Wow. All right, uh, here we go, Doc. Oh, let me move out of here. One second. We got Hong Kong. Wow. They're, they're, they're coming through so quick right now, I can't even keep up here. Here's Canada. Here's Ireland, Doc. We want to say hello, Adam. Here's Dubai. Hi. Top of the evening to you. Okay, here we go. Here we got Argentina, Philippines. Mm. Anyone out there from Africa? Well, right here. Here's Ghana. Oh. Okay. Bonaire. All right. Jamaica. We got Dallas. Hey, Mom. We got Hong Kong. We got India. Hey, uh, back in Australia, Doc. They're moving so quick, I can't even keep up. Look at this here. Pakistan for you. Wow. Okay. Just to show you, they love you. And just, <laughs> just want to let you know from Italy... Uh, look, look at this, Doc. Uh, Kuwait. Oh. All right. Now, you want to see someone really far? Hold yeah. on. Here's, here is Nigeria. Oh. All right. We can't. We're, we got them far. Here's Sydney. We got wow. Philippines. We got Morocco. We got India back here. We have oh, Sydney. Uh, here is back Australia. Here's a here's a beauty one here up back in Ireland. Uh, all we can say, guys, is that we love you. I love you, Japan, too. Japan, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Here is one of my favorites, Zimbabwe. Wow. Look at that. Here are Caraco back in the, in the islands of uh, St. Kitts and all the way up in Singapore. And we have the Brazilians here as well as the old Americans here in old New Jersey. Well, hey, forget about it. All right. So anyways, well, <laughs> Doc, you know about Sri Lanka, right? Sri uh, Lanka is where they're known for those uh, those real healthy potatoes. Those oh, purple potatoes, mm. one of the one of the greatest antioxidants in here from Pakistan. And again, we want to say we love you back in here in New York, U.S., Ohio, uh, and Australia, England. Just want to say, I want to say thank you, Doc. Mm -hmm. I want to give you one of my prayers to you, prayers oh. to the world out there. This is a wonderful video, wonderful, wonderful thing that you did here today. I want to thank you. Oh, listen, let me tell you, this came through so beautiful. This is going right on the channel. Uh, it's going to be on different uh, platforms, but it will be on my channel. Everyone out there is going to have the opportunity to hear you, to hear your wisdom, to hear your strength, to learn from you. And most important is to help heal themselves as well as their loved ones to share this with their friends and family. So if you've just tuned in with us, please subscribe. Why? Because you'll be getting a lot of great videos like these. I put up videos all the time, self-help videos, neuro, uh, brain videos, weight loss videos. Yes, Doc, go ahead. As they say, as the as the breath goes, the mind goes. So uh, steady breath, steady mind. That's great, great, great advice. Great advice. Well, God bless everyone. And uh, Doc, you hang in there with us. Don't go anywhere. We're going to go and end the broadcast now. Uh, thank all our commenters. We are uh, up to 600 people of our, in our chat room almost the whole entire time. So you've really reached and touched a lot of lives. This is a beautiful video. Thank you so much. God bless everyone. Stay well, stay safe, and we'll be with you up real soon. Bye-bye now.